it's Miss Finnegan here, and today I'm going to be reading to you this book called Infinity, Figuring Out Forever. The book is written by Sarah C. Campbell, and the photographs are by Sarah C. Campbell and Richard P. Campbell. So, one of these uh, books that we're reading in the next few weeks are all uh, nominations for the Cook Prize. The Cook Prize is is a prize that is awarded to books that are all about STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So what we will be doing is voting from this book, another book about monarch butterflies, and another book about anglerfish, and we will together decide which one we think is the one that deserves the Cook Prize. Okay, so let's get started by reading Infinity, Figuring Out Forever. Mm. Here's the infinity symbol. Thinking about infinity is fascinating. Send your brain in search of something that never ends. See what comes to your mind. Have you ever found yourself between two mirrors and notice reflections of yourself that keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller? While reflections begin, two mirrors might seem as if they could get smaller forever. This photograph shows 11 smaller images. That's definitely not infinity. So what is infinity? Try to define infinity. Like with a photograph is difficult. Infinity is endless. It is not a simple thing that exists in a single moment. It is an idea. Luckily, human brains are more powerful and flexible than cameras. People can consider ideas that go beyond what we can see. We know this highway stops eventually, but seeing a photograph that shows it getting smaller and smaller as it gets closer to the horizon helps us to imagine endlessness. Looks like that road goes on and on and on forever. Though defying infinity is difficult, there is one thing that people do every day that leads straight towards infinity. Everyone counts. The numbers we use to count start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on, are endless. Some people count stairs when they walk up and down. Can you count the stairs in this sculpture? Or are they infinite? Hmm, they definitely stop somewhere. Infinity is mind boggling, but thinking about infinity is useful, especially in math. In addition to being important for understanding numbers, infinity also helps to find a simple geometric shape, the line. A line is as long is a long thin mark that never ends. The never ending or infinite nature of a line is impossible to capture in a photograph. The arrow at each end of the line tells our brains to imagine the line extending further indefinitely. A number line shows numbers get larger and larger, passing mark after mark along the way. While any number line we could create would have an end, we use an arrow and the infinity symbol to suggest the endlessness of the numbers. This is making me think of when you do fractions on a number line, or maybe in third grade when you do elapsed time, when you make the jumps to figure out how much time has passed, we use these in our math lessons. How high have you tried to count? To 100? to 1,000, what were you counting? Leaves on a tree? Seems nearly impossible to sit there and do that. Birds in the sky? What is the largest number you can think of? No matter what large number you name, there is always a larger number. What's larger than 1 billion? 1 billion 1. Try writing out a gogol, which is 1 followed by 100 zeros. It's a large number, but now add 1. You see, you can always count further. Did you know that the maximum number of stars a person can see from Earth without a, a telescope is about 5,000? Using data from many powerful telescopes, astronomers estimate that our galaxy, the Milky Way, has one trillion stars. Stars in the sky are not infinite, infinite, but the set of counting numbers is. Are we getting closer to infinity? The quest continues. Thinking about infinity is tricky. 
You've already thought about a large number and added one, but that might lead you to make the mistake of thinking infinity is something really, really big. Remember though, infinity is not something big. Infinity is endless. To see infinity in different ways, consider what happens when a simple math problem is repeated endlessly. For example, what if we had one orange slice and took away half and repeated that infinitely? After step one, you would have half an orange slice. After step two, we would have one fourth of an orange slice. Step three, one eighth. Can you see the pattern? Eventually, no orange is left to cut, but the math problem could go on infinitely. Step four would be one eighth divided by two, which would be one sixteenth. Step five would be one sixteenth divided by two, which would be one thirty second. Step six would be one thirty second divided by two, which would be one sixty fourth. Step seven would get us to one. 128th, and step eight would get us to one 256. We could never reach zero because no matter how small the number, half that number is smaller, but not zero. Infinity is endless. Using infinity this way, repeating a problem endlessly, and therefore creating an inexhaustible supply of small bits of precise information is a powerful tool for mathematicians and engineers. By manipulating the bits of information, they can solve complex real-world problems. The branch of mathematics that puts infinity to practical use is called calculus. Typically, taught in high school and college, calculus is particularly useful in solving problems where people need to predict when and where moving objects with changing weights and speeds will be located at a future time. NASA scientists use calculus when they send 1.17 million pound spacecrafts carrying the Perseverance rover from one moving planet, Earth, to another, Mars, more than 292 million miles away, a triumph of infinity. Fun fact. My very good friend, Dr. Thorpe, actually works for NASA, and he is one of the geologists that control the rover on Mars that collects specimens of rock that fly back on the rocket to Earth, and he studies them. We'll talk more about that in person. Thinking about infinity is not simple. The possibility that frequently comes to mind, like mirror images or distant horizons or counting stars are not really examples of infinity. No quick snapshot from the mind's eye can capture it entirely. Instead, we must expand our brains to hold seemingly contradictory ideas. Infinity isn't a number, but it figures into problems containing the tiniest fractions and the most humongous numbers. It shows itself in the endless march of time and in the continuing birth of new stars in our ever-expanding universe. Mm -hmm. The next time you find yourself counting stars in the sky, remember that even though the number of stars is, is finite, your mind has no limits. You can always imagine one more. The end. Let's see who they are highlighting in here for the scientist. Oh, Cantor. Gregor Cantor is the scientist that they're highlighting here. So I will put a scientist on our choice board so you can study that person if you were so interested in learning a little bit more about the study of mathematics and calculus. All right, we're going to talk about this. What did we think of infinity, figuring out 